Welcome to White Lecture Online. Our second video on the catenary, again, starts with the basics. We assume that it's the curve assumed by a cable hanging under its own weight. So we have the span of the cable, the sag, and the shape of this is what we call a catenary. We first take half of that cable and put it on the XY axis, and then we resettle it on the XY axis by lifting the the graph upwards so that this distance to the bottom of the cable is called C and C is defined by the ratio of the tension at the bottom of the cable which we called F divided by the weight per unit length. Now in the previous video we were able to come up with this equation here where the distance Y to any arbitrary point on the cable is equal to the square root of the length from the bottom of the cable to that point squared, we call that S plus this distance quantity squared as well. And also we learned in the previous video that the ratio of dy dx, which is basically the rise over the run anywhere along that cable, is equal to s over c, because s over c we found was equal to the tangent of the angle at that point. Now what we're going to do is we're trying to find an equation where x is a function of the other three variables y, c, and s. And by doing so, we'll try to get into the format where we can explain or express the function of a hanging cable in terms of the hyperbolic function. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take this equation here and take the derivative of y with respect to s, which is equal to this. Notice that the twos cancel out. And then if we solve, let's see, not yet. So we take that. And then we take this equation right here and solve this equation for dx. So we simply take the inverse of that and move the dy across. So we have dx equals c over s times dy. And then if we take this ds and move it over here, so we do that over here, so let's do that. So we'll take this ds and we'll move it over here. And now we take that expression for dy and plug it into this equation. So now we get dx is equal to c over s times dy, which is now this expression that we had up there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the integral of both sides. And of course, this is the integral with respect to s. This is the integral with respect to x. So we get x plus a constant. Again, we'll use the letter k instead of the letter c. And the integral of this is equal to c, because that's a constant that comes out as an integral sign, times the natural log of s plus the square root of s squared plus c squared. So now let's take that equation, bring it up here. Now we're going to realize that when x is equal to 0, s must be equal to 0 as well. So if we do that, if we plug in 0 for s and 0 for x, then we get k is equal to c times the natural log of the square root of c squared, which is basically c. So we can then say that k, the constant, is equal to c times the natural log of c. And then if we then solve this equation for x by moving k to the other side, we now have x is equal to c times the natural log of s plus the square root of s squared plus c squared, that's this quantity right here, minus k, and k now becomes c times the natural log of c. And with a little bit of algebra, then we realize that if we first factor out a c out of both terms right here, and of course the natural log of a minus the natural log of b is equal to the natural log of a over b, we can write it in this format. And now we have an equation where x is equal to a function of c, s, and not yet y. So we'll see that later. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by c. So x over c is equal to the natural log of that. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take the antilog of both sides. So we take the left side and use the exponent of the base e, and the right side, e to the natural log, of course, that negates that, and we get what's inside the parentheses here. So now we have e to the x over c is equal to this. And now also what we, what we can do is we have e to the minus x over c. So we still simply take the inverse of that. So now we have 1 over e to the xc, which is e to the minus xc, is equal to the inverse of that. And now notice we have the beginnings of a hyperbolic function, e to the xc and e to the minus xc. And so in the next video, we're going to take this result and actually produce some hyperbolic functions with it. And so then finally we can see how a catenary, which is basically the shape of a hanging cable hanging on its own weight, can be expressed in terms of hyperbolic functions. And then we can use those equations to solve some problems dealing with the catenary or dealing with the hanging cable. And that's how it's done.